In January of 1966, only two months after Che retreated from the Congo, Cuba hosted an unprecedented gathering that included virtually every armed revolutionary movement from the three poorest continents. The Tri-Continental Conference reinforced the island's role as the leader of internationalism. For Fidel, this was a good opportunity to assess the qualities of the revolutionaries he wanted to support. It was undoubtedly Amilcar Cabral who stole the limelight. Cabral, only 31 years old, was leading a fierce struggle against the Portuguese Empire in one of Africa's smallest and poorest nations, Guinea-Bissau. Esta conferencia, aquí en Cuba, territorio libre de América, el primer país socialista en el hemisferio occidental, es en realidad una gran promesa, una gran esperanza para todos los pueblos que luchan contra el imperialismo. L'Africain Amilcar Cabral prône la lutte armée, alors que le Chilien Salvador Allende défend la voie des urnes. Considération de las delegaciones que nos hacen el altísimo honor de visitarnos. A este año, le llamemos el año de la solidarité. Los combatientes antiimperialistas. 82 délégations. Good afternoon, comrades. We bring our revolutionary greetings from the homeland of Amilcar Cabral in Guinea-Bissau. Amilcar Cabral is a comrade in arms of Commandant in Chef Fidel Castro Rouge. Two great examples of the many examples of honest, sincere revolutionaries who give their lives to be examples for humanity. They live on forever. We hope that their spirit lives on in all of us. Yo soy Fidel. To his Fidel and also this Fidel. We want to thank you for your invitation for us to be with you today here in New York at the National Conference on Cuba with a topic remembering Oshpal, Transcontinental Solidarity, Asia, Africa, America Latina, as we struggle against U.S. settler colonial policies in Guantanamo Bay inside of Cuba, Standing Rock inside of occupied United States of America, and Israeli Zionist occupation of Palestine. But first of all, we want to give our praises and thanks to the organizers of this national conference for your invitation to us to be with you. And we want to thank you for all of your sacrifices, those who have spent many hours on teleconferences, exchanging emails, writing letters, securing a place for the meeting to take place, taking care of logistics, food to eat, etc. Thank you. Muchas gracias. We can only pay you back by working harder for not only to defend Cuba against the illegal, inhumane blockade, as well as the, the ongoing attempts of sabotage, not only of Cuba, but of uh, particularly the revolutionary progressive countries of Latin America, Africa, and Asia. That's the only way we can pay revolutionary Cuba back, is by working for the rest of our lives, morning, noon, nights, etc. We want to go straight to the point because we know that you've had already uh, many workshops today after the wonderful rally last night and all the exchanges of ideas, some of us didn't get any sleep at all. Some of us get very little sleep. So we don't want to uh, abuse your confidence. So we'd like to say that our position is the following. In order to genuinely liberate uh, Guantanamo Bay in Cuba, in order to liberate Palestine, the small parts of Palestine that still exist, which is fragmented, from Zionist occupation, from, from imperialist terrorism, in order to not only stop the, the, the pipeline in South Dakota, but to return the lands of the indigenous people of America to their truthful, rightful owners, the only way that we can truly liberate Africa, Asia, Latin America, and thereby liberating those oppressed peoples who exist inside of the imperialist capitals of Europe and North America. The only way we can do this is by having true continental solidarity. What's true continental solidarity? It's not just 
uh, feeling supportive or sympathetic with the ideas of solidarity. No, it's by actions, by sacrifices, following the examples of Commandante Fidel Castro Che Guevara, or Sajid Kwame Nkrumah, Amir Kakabara, and others. By being inside of mass revolutionary permanent parties, wherever we are. Those of us in New York, in California, in Canada, in Africa, in Latin America, look at the example of those who came before us. They didn't just stop it saying, okay, we have to look for independence inside of Cuba or inside of Guinea Bissau. They organized revolutionary organizations, most of whom picked up the instrument of liberation, which we call the, the arms, the weapons, to organize the mass of people to have a people's war against the violent oppressor, the terrorist oppressor, but they didn't stop there. They realized that we had to use Guinea-Bissau as a base to liberate the rest of Africa and humanity. We had to use, utilize liberated Cuba as the base to liberate the rest of Latin America and the world. Look at the example of Che Guevara. A minister of industry, had been the director of the bank, a, li a leader in the Communist Party of Cuba, a leader in the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Cuba. He resigned all his positions to go to Africa along with his comrades from Cuba, people like Comrade Victor Drake or George Risquette and others, to work with the liberation movement of the Congo, the movement that Patrice Lumumba founded, the movement that he was assassinated defending. Not only that, went from, from Congo to Algeria to meet with the liberation movements there, spent six months inside of Algeria to help organize the, uh, the high command for all the liberation movements of Latin America, all the liberation movements in Latin America, from Venezuela to Colombia to Peru, etc., all over Latin America. All of the training that took place for those just liberation movements in South America were based inside of North Africa in Algeria. And all of the weapons that were given to them went straight with them from, with them from Algeria to their respective areas of Latin America. Same thing with Guinea Conakry, or the same thing with uh, Tanzania. These are examples that we have to follow by. So in other words, it was from Comrade Fidel Castro and Che Guevara to their relationships with the Liberation Front of Algeria, which they supported in their, in their just struggle against the reactionaries of Morocco in doing the same war, with weapons as well as uh, military advice and doctors, the first cooperation between Cuba and Africa. It was from there that Fidel Castro asked Che Guevara to ask Ahmed Ben Bella, the president of Algeria, to allow weapons to go from Algeria to the Latin American countries because Cuba was under the microscope of U.S. imperialism. You can't even smuggle out a, 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 a book of matches, a matchbook out of the side of Cuba. So this is our history. This is an example of, of a solidarity between Africa and Cuba. But now we've already heard about the examples of solidarity between Africans in America and Cuba. But what about Asia, African American? And how can it help us in our struggle with the, 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 the struggles we're going through with, with uh, Sandy Rock, Guantanamo Bay, Palestine, and other struggles? The only way, imperialism is organized on an international scale, and we all know it. We call it a paper tiger, but we know that it has resources. We just found out a few, uh, a few days ago that, what well, we always suspect anyway, that even your new telephones, your smartphones from Apple and Samsung, even your television, Samsung television, all of them are controlled by the CIA. So now when you think it's in a sleep mode, they're spying on you. We've been doing this for many years, this is the type of things to do, but we're not afraid of them. But we have to realize they're organized. They're organized on an international level, and we too have to be organized on an international level. We can't just be organized between San Francisco and New York, or between Washington and Florida, or just between United States and Canada, or United States and Canada, Cuba and and uh, Europe, it has to be on a tri-continental scale. This is where imperialism finds most of its resources, particularly in Africa. In order for us to truly liberate these countries, one of the things we can go away from this conference with is a higher level of consciousness with more of a pledge to be more active, taking our theory and put into actions inside of mass permanent revolutionary parties that engaged in constant political education, constantly studying not only principles such as materialism or dialectic philosophical and historical materialism, not only studying history, but understanding what's going on in the world today around us in Latin America. What are the forces and tension in Ecuador? And it is lead up to these elections that are coming up. What are, what are, what's the state of affairs in Brazil? 
where there was an illegal parliamentary or uh, pilot's coup d'etat against the Workers' Party led by Demi Rousseff and also by uh, Lucio Silva, Lulu. But understanding what's going on right now inside of Guinea-Bissau with the, with the palace school that they've done against the PIDC, the one elections, the Revolutionary Party of Yoko Cabral. We have to make sure that we have constant education inside of these parties and that we have to make sure that we consolidate and defend the basis of the revolution. In order for us to have a real tri-continental organization that's functioning, first of all, we have to become, we have to become conscious that it exists. We mentioned earlier that 512 delegates from 80 different countries came together, many of them straight from the battlefield of Africa, Asia, and Latin America in January 1966 to liberate Cuba. If Cuba wasn't liberated, how could we have a conference inside of Latin America? It was the only country liberated at the time. At that time, Ghana was liberated. Guinea Conner was liberated. But not now. Both of them have suffered coup d'etats. Get him aside, we suffer coup d'etat, come back to power, lose another coup d'etat, come back to power. Just like recently, last year we had another palace coup. But we'll come back to power again. In order to defend these liberated countries, we have to do like we're doing with Cuba. We have to make sure we defend it with teeth and nails. In all aspects, ideological, struggle against the illegal blockade. Make sure that we give solidarity. Make sure we educate the mass of people inside the United States, where you are right now, about the reality of Cuba, like you did today about the realities, about the educational system, the health system in Cuba, the example that Cuba gives for culture for our peoples in the world. We have to make sure we do this, but not just its issues, comrades. It has to be on a regular, consistent basis. So we'd like to challenge you to make sure that we lead this conference, not only with exchanges of contacts, that we establish uh, newsletters, magazines, and why not television? Why not take advantage of Telesur, which exists? which of course is under threat too by imperialism, destabilizing Venezuela left and right, doing their best to trying to find the traitors inside the, the, the United Socialist Party of Venezuela, as well as the, the reactionaries inside the society of Venezuela to destabilize the country, to try to overthrow the constitutional democratic regime led by the Socialist, United Socialist Party at this moment, represented by its president, Nicolas Maduro, a continuator of the, of the revolutionary works of Commandante Hugo Chavez. We have to make sure we defend the revolution inside of uh, Ecuador, inside of Bolivia, which is being threatened by U.S. imperialists on a regular basis. But comrades, where we are today, whether in Chicago or in California, Washington D.C. or other parts of the United States or Canada, make sure that we bring the resources that comes from the revolution to our people, so that our people become more educated, more educated, and have a higher sense of ethics to make sure we contribute to humanity. So we want to say in conclusion, comrades, coming together today was very important, but more important is the work we're going to do after we leave this conference inside the context of tricontinental solidarity. We'd like to refer you to a revolutionary example, a comrade sister who was the executive secretary of OSHPAL, comrade Lourdes Cervantes, who sends her greetings to you, and who's representing this conference by her comrades, our comrades of ICAP, E-C-A-P, which is the Cuban Institute for Friendship of the Peoples of the World, founded by Fidel Castro Che Guevara in 1960. Oshpal still has its headquarters in Havana, Cuba. Comrade Lourdes Avanti is there day and night, is regularly in contact through uh, email, and they have a beautiful website that I would like to really encourage you to check out on a regular basis. Its address is www.tricontinental.cu www.tricontinental.cu where they still feature the Tricontinental magazine which you all can contribute to and also follow as, as it's done for the past 50 years it always covers the revolutionary struggles of our peoples in the world so comrades we want to thank you we salute you and we say ready for the revolution